welcome dudes in this video we'll talk about how to construct the tcp and the data header along with the ethernet and ip header and send the packet out onto the network this tutorial will also tell you more about the concept of the pseudo header while computing the tcp checksum once again we have the includes in the beginning of the program we mentioned data underscore size to be 100 bytes 100 here we'll be using it as 100 bytes later and uh, the familiar source ethernet address destination ethernet address the source ip and the destination ip and along with it we've introduced the source port and the destination port this would basically be filled up in the tcp headers so we look at the pseudo header now actually why don't we talk about this a little later let's go through first whatever we are very familiar with the create raw socket function bind raw socket to interface you've seen all this before send raw packet simple enough create ethernet header exactly the same as it was in the previous example and you change the compute ip checksum call to compute checksum the logic remains the same it takes in unsigned character data and a length as input computes then returns the checksum the create ip header function once again exactly the same as it was previously now we come into the create tcp header function and note i've mentioned here already that this is defined in tcp.h tcp header seen this in the presentation as well so as you can see the source and destination ports the 32 byte sequence uh, 32 bit sequence and acknowledgement numbers and after that depending upon if the machine is little or big edn we would have the, the resets in the flags the offset the reserved field etc in a particular ordering please try and compare this structure with the ip header structure image which is there in the raw socket programming tutorial page there should be a one to one correspondence between the fields as well as the ordering then we have the window and then the checksum field and then finally the urgent pointer so now let's look at how to use this tcp header programmatically first of all and create a pointer to a tcp header structure and allocate enough memory to make a tcp header then we go ahead and fill up the source and destination ports note the source destination ports both are 16 bits in length because of which we use h tones and the sequence number and acknowledgement number both of them are 4 bytes or 32 bits in length that's why we use the h tone nl host to network long reserved of course has to be zero then we basically point to the data offset or where the tcp header actually ends once again this is of the same format as the ip ihl or the internet header length and has to be divided by four to find out the number of double words after which the tcp header ends among the flags we actually set the sin flag to be one set the window to be hundred checksum we will calculate later with the pseudo header urgent pointer is also set to zero and we go ahead and return the tcp header now create pseudo header and compute tcp checksum now as you note that the tcp header has a checksum right now this checksum is very special in the sense that it not only includes the tcp header and the data but also parts of the ip header this has been done in order to get a better hold on the error checking capability while sending a packet onto the network so the way the tcp checksum is calculated is over what is called the pseudo header which consists of part of the ip headers and the tcp header and the data now let's look at the pseudo header for digging deeper now the pseudo header consists first of the source ip then the destination ip then one byte of the reserved field and the protocol which the 
IP packet is actually carrying. In this case, of course, it has to be TCP. And then finally, the TCP length, which is the TCP header length and the TCP data, both which TCP carries. So as you are seeing here that the source IP, the destination IP and the protocol are nothing but RIPs. Also the reserved field for that matter are RIPs from the IP header itself. After which we mention the length of the TCP header and the TCP data. So now going back. to the computation of the TCP checksum. So first what we do is we find the length of the TCP header and the data, which is what is called segment length or TCP segment length, which is nothing but the total length of the IP packet minus the length of the IP header, right? Because see the IP total uh, tot underscore length field contains the whole size of the IP packet which is the IP header, the TCP header and the TCP data. So in order to find the length of the TCP header and the TCP data, you need to subtract the IP header length from the total length value. Because we have already stored the total length value in network byte order, we go ahead and use N2HS to convert it back to host byte order for the mathematical calculation of the segment length. Now we find out the total length over which the TCP checksum will be computed. As we've already mentioned, this is the pseudo header plus the TCP header and the data, which is nothing but the segment underscore length, which we calculated in the previous step. Now we go ahead and allocate memory for this full header over which the TCP checksum will be calculated. Once we get this memory, we go ahead and cast the beginning of this header as the pseudo header and go ahead and fill the requisite fields of the pseudo header, which are the source address, the destination address, the protocol and the TCP segment length. Note that the TCP segment length is being converted also to network byte order by using H tones. So we have created the pseudo header now. Now it's time to copy the TCP header after the pseudo header. So this is where we make sure that we are copying the TCP header after the pseudo header. And once again, we can find out the length of the TCP header by using the D of into four. We already explained this in TCP header formation. Now we go ahead and copy the data after the pseudo header as well as the TCP header. Then we go ahead and compute the checksum over this newly constructed header consisting of the pseudo header, part of the TCP header and the data. We go ahead and free the whole header. 